sun incarnated and planted just like a seed into the sacred mountain, just like the sun. So when they got the carbon-14 dates back, they didn't believe them. They thought they had contaminated the sample. So they sent one to London, one to New York, and one to Mexico City. All three came back confirming he was dead as early as 770 B.C. That's back in the pre-classic period when the Olmec mother culture was still around. And it turns out the young warrior, the female warrior, had been dead over 400 years before her burial, possibly dressed as a warrior because she was his direct descendant. He may have been the founder of the dynasty, and these are on the southern platform where his descendants overthrown after an internal revolt. They've done no DNA testing yet to prove the link between these people, nor their identity, but it's usually the case at a site like this that all the burials are related in some way. So why did he have no legs below the knee? In Mesoamerican art, oftentimes you'll see a ruler depicted with his feet sprouting roots as if he were a tree taking root into his homeland. So we believe that possibly in order to honor this man, he was severed at the knee and his lower legs and feet were left planted in his homeland, so figuratively he would always be planted where he came from, which again may be Oaxaca. Because in the codices that come from Oaxaca, they show people carrying bundles with skulls coming out during long processions. And the Aztecs did it too. They carried their dead in bundles with them as they migrated. And when the Spanish encountered this, they asked them, what are you carrying in those bundles that's so important? And the Aztecs responded, these are our gods. And the Spanish thought, oh, a piece of jade or something, who cares? But what they meant were the bones of their ancestors, who to them were the gods incarnated. And you could actually see a codex page right over here. This is the codex Borgia. 